begins on page 355. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly love. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work, and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, whose prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back, those who prophesy lies, and whose prophecy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for, for long. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let no one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, said the Lord? It is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 82, we read and the following by whole verse. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment heaven. in the midst of the gods. Save the weak and the orphan, defend the humble and needy. Save 
They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All foundations of the earth are hidden. Nevertheless, you shall die like a rubble and fall like any prince. Reading from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to, to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from one strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, Put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release. In order to obtain a better resurrection, others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were committed for their faith, did not receive the Lord's promise, since God had provided something better, so they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer, the protector of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding his shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.
according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, will be divided. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Well, two weeks ago, the bishops of the Worldwide Anglican Communion, that is, all the churches across the globe who have historic ties to the Church of England and who are held together in bonds of faith and affection, the bishops met in Canterbury, England for their once a decade Lambeth Conference. Maybe of you, some of you, followed a bit of that or heard about some of that. Uh, either in the secular news or the, uh, the Episcopal news service. The Episcopal Church is, of course, part of the Anglican Communion, and our own bishop, Carly Hughes, and her husband, David Smedley, attended, along with about 100 other Episcopal bishops and most of their spouses. The conference as a whole included nearly 650 bishops and 450 of their spouses from every part of the globe. They gathered to share prayer, scripture study, Eucharist, and their experience of following Jesus in vastly different contexts, with all of the attendant challenges and blessings that they experienced. And all of these differences were cultural, linguistic, economic, political, environmental. The areas the bishops were asked to consider in their gathering were the following. There were 10 different topics. Mission and evangelism, saint church, that is preventing and healing from the abuse of power, in particular sexual abuse, Anglican identity, that is what it means to be a Christian in the Anglican tradition, reconciliation, reconciliation in society as well as in the church, human dignity, the environment and sustainable development, Christian unity, interfaith relations, discipleship, and science and faith. That 
there's a huge scope of topics to be considering. And together, through worship and reflection, the bishops tried to listen and discern in whole plenary sessions and in small cross-cultural groups how to be faithful followers and Christian witnesses in their own contexts in this time and in the decade ahead. The bishops were invited to ponder and pray about the actions that each church, each diocese, each community could take to be walking in Jesus' way with deeper love and greater compassion. Many of the bishops uh, that I know and follow wrote short pieces about what they were learning each day and experiencing and posting them to Facebook, and maybe some of you saw some of those. One reflection seemed particularly fitting for this morning's gospel. Bishop Carol Gallagher was for a time an assisting bishop here in our diocese. That was about 10 years ago. Does anybody remember Bishop Gallagher? Probably. She's now serving in Massachusetts, but she has served as kind of a um, come in and help sort it out bishop in many different dioceses in this uh, in the Episcopal Church. And so at the Lambert Conference, not only did she bring her experience as a woman who has served in a bishop in so many different dioceses, she also brought her own heritage and culture as a Native American. And here's her reflection. Interpersonal and cultural misunderstandings happen all the time. Even folks who speak the same language can have trouble understanding others. While in England, we often delighted in the different terms and usages we heard. At Lambeth, with bishops from all over the globe, there were many times we had to explain how we do things here in the US and to listen deeply to their circumstances and challenges. The disciples were confused by Jesus. What he did and who he spoke to often threw them into confusion. And we who follow him are also often confused. The good news is that we are followers and do not have to go this road alone. So, if you are confused by Jesus, especially by his words in today's gospel, you are not alone. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth, Jesus says? No, I tell you, but rather division. As we hear so often in Luke's gospel, Jesus is putting a really sharp edge on his words. Not particularly comfortable or easy to hear. Division instead of peace? But what about Jesus being called Prince of Peace? And what about the song the angels sang to the shepherds on the night of his birth, right at the beginning of Luke's gospel? Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Has all that just been cast aside at this point? And divided households, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, in-laws, families, congregations, communities. Wasn't Jesus pro-family? And wasn't there already enough division in Jesus' day between Jews and Gentiles, between the Romans and everyone else? Was he trying to throw gasoline on the fire of the already smoldering tensions in Jerusalem and Palestine? No wonder the disciples got confused. And don't we, don't we have enough division in our own time, in our own place, in our own country? Jesus was not about creating division for its own sake. He was not about creating division for its own sake. Instead, he was making it clear that being his disciple, that following in his way, will cause us to make choices about our values, our actions, and our practices. 
sometimes those choices can cause a rift or separation from others close to us. And that can be painful. At other times, the choices we make through faith and prayer that draw us closer to God can draw us closer to others who are also seeking the love and goodness of God. And this closeness comes not because we share the same background or culture or even the same language, or because we always agree about what faithful Christian action and behavior looks like. The bishops of the Lambda Conference certainly had differences and strong feelings about realities that they experience, such as the continuing effects of colonialism in the global south, or about the degradation of the environment and rising sea levels that endanger very vulnerable communities, and about the connection between human dignity and sexuality. And if you don't think that was a hot button topic going into the Lambda Conference, then you wouldn't know what was the feelings going into it. But despite these divisions, the bishops of the Anglican Communion chose to be embraced by the love of Christ, to embrace one another with the love of Christ, and to commit to sharing that self-giving, self-sacrificing, life affirming love as the church's highest goal and deepest truth. When we allow ourselves to be embraced by the love of God, when we commit day by day, over and over again, to learning to hear and see and follow Jesus, and to give away or pass along that love that we have received, when we do that, then Jesus becomes for us the Prince of Peace. He doesn't smooth things over or make nice, but he does show us how to walk with goodness and integrity and loving kindness through life, even when the path is confusing and not always clear. And I'll close with the prayer that Bishop Gallagher wrote in her original introduction. Let us pray. Eternal Creator, you guide us by day and night setting the stars and planets in the night sky, and the sun moves over the horizon by your hand. We are often lost, confused, and misunderstanding. We want to go our own way and cry out when lost. You come and rescue us and lead us back home. We hear your voice for ourselves and know your love. Amen. Let us stand and give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father of all life, made for us of all things, we believe in one Lord, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of all the time. Because <laughs> He suffered on the third day of those men in a prince's 
He will come again in the world of 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 the Third, the people form three, we found on page three hundred eighty seven. You are invited to all your, add your own petitions at the appropriate time. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for the renewal of faith and faithfulness for the Episcopal Church and for our own parish. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Let us pray for presiding Bishop Michael, for our own Bishop Carly, for our priest Vicky, and for the community of St. John Baptist. We pray for all bishops, priests, and sacraments, and the Lord, and the Lord, and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Us grace to do your will and all that we undertake. Speak on favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Deliver in your sight. Give to the departed eternal rest. Especially Joseph Burke Sr., David Rubman, and those we name. Praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us pray in our parish cycle of prayer for Tom and Diane Straka, Martha and Greg Story, Francis, Jackie and Michael Sullivan, Holly, Bill, and Sarah, John Painter, Marcy Peel. Stephen Charlene Powell, Matthew, Catherine. Let us pray for all our parish ministries and those in, the, in our wider community. All Saints, St. Lectures and Lay, Eucharistic Ministers, and the Cub Scout Pack 56. Let us pray for all those in our parish prayer list, especially Debbie Thurston, Ann, John Baker, Emma, Barbara Urday, Max, Caroline, Max Hayden, Jennifer, Milton Hall, Jeff Pymack, John Mather, Trish and Ted Raymond, Ricky Senna, Vicki and Anthony Siragusa, Marcy Peel, Timothy, Heather Wallace, Phyllis Wallace, Gerard Walsh, Bill Ward, Jean yeah. W. John Gillespie, Jeanette Williams, George and Linda Savile, and those we now name. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Returning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And Please be seated. Welcome to all of you and welcome to those who are joining us on Zoom today. We are glad that you are here. Uh, it is good to be back after a couple of weeks of vacation. Um, thank you especially to Sister Monica Claire for leading my prayer and preaching two weeks ago, and I hope that you all enjoyed meeting um, the Reverend Susan Siegel last week, and it's always good to hear another voice, and well, it's good to be away, it's been wonderful to be back. There are announcements on the last page of the bulletin. Um, of course, uh, Ramage Collection has begun and is continuing, and so please uh, bring, your, bring your items during the time that the collection is open. Also, if you haven't already signed up to help with the sale, either the preparation or the sale itself, look at the sign-up sheet on the, uh, the poster on the door in the Arctic. Um, the next food pantry guest distribution is this coming Saturday. And uh, Barbara, is there anything that you need to add to what's here? Is there anything in particular? Okay, so just Read the announcement and you're good to go. Also, we're collecting school supplies for the Long Hill District school students in need. Those can be dropped off in either the basket, uh, the bell tower, or in the side entryway. We need them back by August 25th so we can get them to the school social worker and the children can have them uh, in time for the start of school. The Creation Care Bible Challenge Group uh, that's been reading through. Uh, these uh, daily scripture readings through the summer is going to meet on Tuesday, August 30th at 7 p.m. outside with a folding chair and a favorite summer beverage. We'll supply some snacks. And even if you haven't been following uh, that Bible challenge, but this is a topic that you're interested in, please come and join us. I have to say that one of the um, one of the things that I found very exciting to come out of the land of the conference is some of the plans for um, for sustainability and for um, uh, environmental preservation and protection uh, that the uh, Anglican Communion Office is uh, suggesting. And so I'd like to share some of that information with you. I can make it more widely available. I know there'll be a lot more to come, but um, if you're interested in any of that, please come join us on Korea. And now we normally do this on the first Sunday of the month, but I wasn't here. So does anybody here have a birthday or an anniversary in the month of August? And I know some of you are out there. <laughs> so if you have a birthday or an anniversary in the month of August or a special, you know, some special milestone, please come forward. So, 
anniversary. <laughs> so you guys did the same thing we did. <laughs> are your are your birthday or the dates close to each other? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what day is your is your birthday on? Okay, what date is your anniversary? Okay, so you got it separated. My birthday is the 27th. Our anniversary is the 23rd. And I only have my father remember, which is good. <laughs> and the other thing that's happening is that today is Allison's actual birthday. <laughs> so following following church, we are having a little birthday party. And Barbara, you're part of that too. So uh, so please join us for that, Mrs. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase, especially Allison, Barbara, Bill, John and Betty, John and Vicki. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace with passive understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your thoughts. We space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By the world that were created and have From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. And again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is the body that was given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, he knows us the great Accept these prayers and praises, Father, 
Through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come and receive the gifts of life, hope, and freedom. Thank you. 
continuing on page 365, let us pray. The eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into a world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with sensitiveness of heart through the past Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love and make haste to do kindness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and stirs heart and soul, be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. to God.
ます。